Poundbury, the infamous urban extension to the historic town of Dorchester, both towns have come a long way since the beginning. Today we will be looking at the development of Poundbury, how it started, when it started, when it will be finished, was Poundbury brought to the local community and how does that same community feel about it. It all started with the area being home to different tribes from 4000 BC until the Romans arrived in Britain in 43 AD where the Juro tricks were likely to be. After the Romans defeated the local tribes, they named the town Dernavaria. By 864, the Saxons, who referred to themselves as the Dorsatus, took over the surrounding area of Dernavaria, and after combining the original name of the town from the Latin language, Dor slash Dorn, and from the Celtic languages, Chester, the town ended up being called Dorchester. In 1337, Edward, the Black Prince, was made the first Duke of Cornwall after the Duchy of Cornwall was created by his father, Edward III, to provide an income for the heir to the throne. Each future Duke of Cornwall would be the eldest surviving son of the monarch and heir to the throne. This meant that the Duke of Cornwall owned 532.5 square kilometres, or 0.2% of UK land, including parts of land in Sussex, Kent, Hertfordshire, Devon, Cornwall and Dorset. It wasn't until 1958 that Prince Charles became the Duchy of Cornwall and thus far he has been both the oldest and the longest serving heir apparent in British history. This led to him releasing a BBC documentary and a book called A Vision of Britain in 1987 where he discusses urban development and the key principles for future towns being the architecture, affordable housing, a walkable community and a mix of uses. Charles started getting involved with the Poundbury project since 1987 when he selected the area where he would build Poundbury. At the time, the West Dorset District Council was looking for an appropriate location to build additional housing and the land on which Poundbury is built was suggested as a suitable spot as this was decided to be an urban extension to Dorchester. In 1988, Charles got well-known architect and business planner Leon Creer to create a master plan that followed the rules of a vision of Britain and followed the traditional Dorset architecture. Architecture. When the master plan was displayed to the public in 1989, local residents and interested parties were able to give their opinion on it before planning consent was acquired. In October 1993, construction on Poundbury officially started, starting off with Phase 1 that included Poundbury Square linking through to Victoria Park. John Simpson designed the main building in this sector called Brown Sword Hall, which is managed by the Poundbury Village Hall Trust and has a community hall that is available for the community. This part of Poundbury has some significant buildings such as the Poundbury Village Stores, Cafe Octagon and the Poet Lorette Public House. In October 1999, planning permission was granted for the second phase of Poundbury, which included the Southwest Quadrant, Parkway Farm, and the Charbonnel at Walker Chocolate Factory, which was previously known as the House of Dorchester. This area has provided six hectares of employment space over the 10-year development period, and it has provided 35% additional housing in Phase 2 since 2005. The rest of Phase 2 was granted planning approval in 2006, which is the Southwest Quadrant, after completing the first six hectares. This is a four hectare site that provides an additional 190 homes, with the main focus being on the butter market, with small retail units and workshops where regular community events take place, such as Easter egg hunts and Christmas markets, which is mainly organized by local businesses. The main focus of Phase 2 is Queen Mother Square, which was formally opened in 2016 by Queen Elizabeth II, who is the current Queen of England to commemorate her mother, Queen Elizabeth. Construction started in 2010 to build offices, flats, underground car parking spaces, a variety of restaurants and cafes, along with a Waitrose supermarket, and it was completed in 2019, providing 20 luxury apartments with a health spa on the ground floor. Permissions for the last sections of Poundbury was granted in September 2011. This includes Phase 3 and Phase 4, which covers the Northern Quadrant, which is the North East and the North West. The North East Quadrant was completed in 2020 and has delivered an additional 550 homes, with 35% of the homes built for affordable renting and discounted homes for first-time buyers. This also included Damer's first school relocating to the North East Quadrant in 2017 next to the Grey Field. The Northwest Quadrant is the last quadrant to be built and it is planned to start in 2022 with expectation of completion by 2025. Once completed, Poundbury is expected to have increased Dorchester's population by around 25%, which is around 5,800 people, and is expected to create around 3,500 jobs. One of the big things that has been developed in Poundbury is the number of affordable housing offered to prospective buyers 
with both the cheap and the expensive housing mixed together so that you can't tell a difference. One of the more controversial design decisions in Poundbury is its attempt to hide and sometimes remove certain things such as cars, satellites and road signs to keep the town clutter free. There are no road signs in Poundbury which has had mixed opinions over the years and is encouraged to not drive cars when possible. The economy has also benefited from the creation of Poundbury. Poundbury is expected to contribute £500 million by 2025 along with adding an additional £105 million in gross value added. The architecture is a questionable topic when talking about Poundbury. The outer neighbourhood areas are built with a vernacular architecture which is outside any tradition and without any professional guidance. And this has confused many people due to the fact that it does not keep up with the architecture used in Dorchester and even Old Poundbury. The architecture used as well is quite old with the use of Georgian architecture. This style was used for buildings between 1714 and 1830 and some of the features of this style include symmetrical window placement, stone slash brick walls and corner coins. Nowadays we see contemporary architecture used in places such as Dubai, New York and France that represents a high-tech futuristic style. These are all assisted with the use of new techniques such as computer-aided design, advanced technology and modern building materials. So how can Poundbury be seen as the town of the future? Charles commented on this himself and he said, When I set out on this venture, I was determined that Poundbury would break the mould of conventional housing development in this country and create an attractive place for people to live, work and play. Many people said that it can never succeed, but I am happy to say that the sceptics were wrong and it is now a thriving urban settlement alongside Dorchester. So this is correct, as even though the architecture is experimental and ancient, Charles has managed to exceed initial expectations by implementing features such as making sure that Poundbury has its dedicated town centre, that's no more than a five minute walk from anywhere in Poundbury, mixing low and high income homes to make them indistinguishable from one another and making the roads intentionally chaotic by removing road signs to make road users think about what they are doing. The amount of changes that Charles made to Poundbury to make it stand out from the other towns makes Poundbury a big success. There are a lot of discussions on Poundbury about whether it's a place that is warm, welcoming and worth visiting, or whether it's a place that's cold, like a ghost town and somewhere where you want to stay clear from. I wanted to find out from a few local people that live in old or new Poundbury, alongside a few business managers slash owners on their thoughts on Poundbury. Let's see what they had to say. So the business was first opened in 2007 over on what was Old Poundbury, so about a mile or so away, and then we moved and relocated to this office in about 2016. It's hi, so my name's Helen McConney Bear, and I'm the CEO of the charity Outcall Education Trust. And we raised £350,000 to build this office and community space and cafe on the great field at Poundbury. And took us two years and we opened uh, pretty much a year ago on April the 16th, 2021. Uh, we were limited for space and the cost to move to a new premises and develop it ourselves was cheaper than the rent that we were paying where we were. Well before uh, we just worked out of a garden garage at my home so we've never had a proper location before. In reality, it hasn't, so we're a Dorchester company, but the most of our customers are national. We do have a few people locally, but it's, the, you know, it's less than 1% of our overall turnover. Well, we're not a business, we are a charity. The cafe does raise money, much needed funds for our charity. Uh, so for us, it's fantastic because we were tucked away in a village before and didn't really have a very high profile. So now uh, we work very closely with Damer's First School, which we're next door to, as well as you know, the Thomas Hardy School. We welcome people from Melrose Court, which is sort of for, for, uh, retired, older people. Um, we host different clubs for children after school. We have holiday clubs. We have hangout days for teenagers. We have coffee mornings for over 65. So we've transformed into an organisation, a charity that's absolutely at the heart of the community. And we think we've got to know so many people, and, and everybody feels very comfortable here. Um, so it's been transformative for us. So, in terms of construction started, obviously it was a good thing, it enabled us to relocate. Absolutely wished it never started here. 
especially not this part of Poundbury, but the new Poundbury. I'm quite happy with the way it is. It's really, really, it's a really nice development. Better that there than the shitty old fields that the, the farmer had had where you, you didn't have access to them. So yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Poundbury, I think, is amazing because it's not just houses. So as you can see, it, there's lots of green space. There are lots of independent businesses. So part of the whole point of Poundbury is that there's um, uh, sort of mixed development. So there are lots of sort of small shops with affordable rents. Um, so I would say most shopkeepers, you know, get to know their clientele. It's a really friendly, welcoming place. You can walk everywhere. Uh, you don't have to pay for parking. Cars don't dominate. There are no fast roads. Uh, there's lots of uh, trees and green spaces, so it's really welcoming for pets and families. Um, I think what people don't realise, there are about 30% um, uh, of the buildings here are actually flats, but you have no sense of that because there's lots of green space. And uh, another 30% is sort of... Um, housing association or sort of uh, rented more affordable homes and yet they look beautiful so it's a really inclusive community and I think that's really rare. The vast majority of our customers are businesses rather than what we would call end users, individuals, so Poundbury's not really seen any increase for us in terms of a business revenue. In terms of the park, absolutely. So the play park only opened um, a few weeks ago and uh, we've been a bit knocked for six, I'll be quite honest, because uh, suddenly, you know, families are coming from for miles around, which is absolutely fantastic and it's what it's designed to be. So if it's a sunny day, yes, we... Um, it, it, well, it's fantastic, but yes, it is getting busier and busier. Uh, Poundbury itself, um, I don't know, but I know that lots of people come to see Poundbury um, as well as to, to stay um, and to eat in the nice little restaurants and pubs and places like ourselves. So it is definitely a destination now, not just somewhere that's used by the people who live here. Uh, it's very good. Yeah. When walking through Poundbury, I meet lots of interesting people, strangers, everyone's speaking, everyone's very friendly. Yeah, no problem at all. To be honest, I've not really met anyone that hasn't stopped and spoken. Um, you see a lot of dog walkers, they're always friendly. Everyone gives you the time of the day. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice community that's starting to develop on there. The locals in the old uh, part of Poundbury here, very, very good. But the new Poundbury, well, they are quite a lot of snobs and God knows what else, like, you know. Fantastic, because we run so many things from here. So we have a book swap, uh, we have a supper club, um, we've done book readings, we have, as I say, you know, free senior socials, we do, so just on Friday we have free music in the park at lunchtime so people can come and bring their picnics and either, uh, you know, just enjoy the music or have something from the cafe. So, you know, we've got a fantastic relationship with the locals. Well, as I said, it's, it's a thriving community. It's small businesses that are opening up. Around every corner there's, there's something new to see. Um, and I've been involved, well, I was involved with actually the second phase building on Poundbury. I was doing a lot of the groundworks. Um, so, uh, from a personal point of view, um, there's nothing really that I would like to see extra on there. It, it's, it's developing quite nicely on its own. I would like to see it being bulldozed down the new Poundbury, that would be a good start. And then probably then go on to a design of, in keeping with Dorchester, which this part is, and then the older bit of Poundbury down across there was built by Combin Homes, that type of style, not the inner London type style. I think um, the only thing that needs to be helped a bit is some businesses do definitely come and go. Um, so, and I know that's a, 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 a question, you know, to do with COVID and rent and, um, um, you know, the bill, you know, um, uh, business rates and things like that. Um, so having small spaces, I think, that are more affordable is very important. Um, no, I, I, I think it's a very balanced, successful community. There's not much I want to change. The only thing I would say is a person that's lived in Dorchester all its life and seen Poundbury develop would be houses with 
you know, bigger gardens, but that's not part of the design philosophy of the area, and therefore it's not going to happen. One hundred percent. It is is a blot on the landscape, especially when you come over Ridgeway. You can see it. It's just not in keeping. As you can see, folks, at the back of me, you can see the roofs of the new Poundbury in between these two sets of um, semis here. Totally, totally not in keeping. And they built it so close and everything, and it's just a complete, utter blot on the landscape. And it's a shame. And I overview that it's really a, um, a wasted building plot for, for new builds. Um, no, I disagree with that. It's not posh. There's some very nice buildings on there. There's obviously some people with a lot of money on there, but I treat everybody the same. I don't distinguish between posh people, poor people. I'm meeting a lot of different interesting people every time I walk across it. Um, I'm there most days and my children go to school there. Um, you know, waiting to pick the kids up from school. There's people from four corners of the world wandering around Poundbury. It's lovely, really nice. Yes and no. Uh, there are elements of Poundbury that I would say locals consider to be posh, mainly because the majority of the residents have probably got higher income than those that would have lived like myself in the council estates within Dorchester. Therefore, it would be deemed as posh. Uh, is it fake? It's a new development, or, although it's probably you know, 15, 16 years old. It's being developed as new buildings to look like historical buildings, and in that sense, it is fake, but it's made it interesting. I think the only areas that I would say of Poundbury from an architectural point of view are fake would be in places like Queen, Mary, uh, Queen Mother Square where the front of buildings have been really well developed and they spent a lot of money but if you look down the sides of them they've actually cheated and painted pillars and um, building effects on them rather than spending the money developing them properly. But individual perspective, no I wouldn't say it's fake, the people are nice that I interact with and they're just normal people. I think from what I've said, it's the complete opposite. I mean, anybody who says Poundbury is ugly haven't walked around because you haven't got ghettos of the same type of housing. There's been a lot of investment into every house looking different, it, lots of trees and planting and green spaces and um, houses not being on roads with busy traffic. Um, posh, complete opposite. You know, it's over 30% social housing. So. Anybody who says it's posh doesn't know what on earth they're talking about. And as I say, another 30% are flat. So, um, and the fact that you can walk to the hospital if you work there, you can walk to school. Um, there'll always be people with an agenda, but it's certainly not we've, what we've come across. And any child who's lucky enough to go to somewhere like Damer's First School, which is here on Poundbury, then it's the most amazing school. So I think it's, you know, it's a balanced community where most people are very, very happy. I suppose, yeah, you know, a very small bit of the new Poundbury would be the great field, and that's good for the kids, and they've got a, like a cafe come, whatever it is for the locals, that's fine. But the rest of the stuff, I try not to look at it or go near it or even travel through it. Well, it has to be here, doesn't it? <laughs> um, because it's the most beautiful part with so much for so many people. The fact that there are 500 trees planted, there are wild flower meadows, uh, there are a mile of walks um, and you can stop and have a cafe and your children can play for free on the most amazing part. Um, but I love the independent business on Poundbury, you know, the fact that I can, well, you know, somewhere like Queen Mother Square and I can pop into the Brace of Butchers or into Waitrose or across to Budgeons just across here. Um, you know, it's, it's great. There's something for everybody here. I love the great field, thriving area for the community. Wonderful park has been built there. A wonderful cafe there, you can go meet different people in there, everyone's friendly. Um, I also like the area where the, the cemetery is, it's quite, um, it's more like a nature reserve there, that's beautiful. Uh, Queen Mother Square is okay, it's got some lovely, lovely angles, lovely buildings, bit too urbanised for me, but it's nice all the same. Um, 
Yeah, every corner you can walk around is a different, yeah, different angle. Every, yeah, it's difficult to describe. I, as a whole, I like all of it. I think, as I mentioned before, from a housing development point of view, all of the houses are on top of each other. It's very dense and there's no gardens. It's the reason why I don't live here, but it's part of the design philosophy and it, it, it's proven to be popular. Well, there are a couple of buildings I don't like because I think they're very big and out of proportion. Um, so I think uh, maybe when you see Palmer from afar, it doesn't blend into uh, Dorset, you know, it's certainly not typical Dorset at all. So you think, oh my goodness, especially first time visitors. I think there's some buildings on the outskirts that are a bit out of proportion uh, and not very attractive. Um, but I think that would be my least favourite thing. My least favourite part has got to be where it joins into Old Poundbury and into the existing the town of Dorchester. Um, you come off of New Poundbury, everything is spotless. The further into Dorchester you go, the grimier and dirtier things become. Um, so yeah, I'd say when leaving New Poundbury and entering sort of like the older part of Dorchester, um, yeah, it sort of outshines it a bit. You can't disagree that a lot of great things have come from the development of Poundbury, such as affordable housing, the encouragement to avoid using motor vehicles when possible, and more jobs for people of all ages. Let me know what you think. Do you think that Poundbury has brought more good than bad to the local community? Or do you think that it's brought more bad than good to the local community? Thank you for watching my documentary, The Development of Poundbury.